A look into Janet Jackson's Super Bowl performance. Was it planned? Janet Gates 17 years later. Every year, football fans from all over the world huddle up to cheer on their favorite teams at the Super Bowl and pop culture fans race to their television screens awaiting to see a star-studded performance at the halftime show. Halftime shows would go from a bathroom break and snack reloading session to an eyes glued to the TV shift when Michael Jackson gave an iconic performance back in 1993. Janet Jackson would follow in her brother's footsteps in 2004 when she was asked to perform at the Bowl's 38th annual halftime show. Like Mike, Janet wowed the audience and viewers with her performance, but would end up shocking millions, 148 million to be exact, of viewers from all around the world when a wardrobe malfunction occurred during the end of guest performer Justin Timberlake's song Rock Your Body when he yanked a piece of Janet's upper garment exposing her breast. The terms Janet Gate and wardrobe malfunction would become pop culture references for years to come, and unfortunately for Janet, the incident would haunt her for years after the fact, and she'd receive waves of backlash. Public scrutiny, and her career would take a huge blow when big brands and networks cut ties and refused to promote or play any of her songs on their platforms. Till this day, Janet and company insists that the accident was a complete mishap, but others think that the math just isn't adding up. So was this all just a publicity stunt gone wrong? Stay tuned to find out exactly what happened and why on that day, America collectively lost their damn minds. Janet had officially been announced as the next headliner in the year 2003 for the up-and-coming bowl. She was actually supposed to headline the year prior, but the NFL went with the group U2 instead. MTV had been given the task of producing everything and centered the show's theme around their campaign at the time, Choose or Lose, a campaign that encourages young viewers to be politically involved, you know, voting. The media would document her journey leading up to her performance, and in a rare behind-the-scenes footage, we get to witness Janet and Justin rehearsing for his guest performance. Towards the end of the rehearsal, though, and the end of the song, viewers noticed how there was no tugging or pulling at Janet's shirt in any way. My decision to change the Super Bowl performance was actually... Instead, the duo would end the show facing the audience. Nothing more and nothing less. As we all know by now, Justin would end up yanking at Janet's breastplate, exposing her chest accessorized with a silver piercing, and things clearly wouldn't go as planned. Or did it? According to Justin, the plan was to pull away the rubber bustier to reveal a red lace bra, but the garment had collapsed. Janet's exposed upper area was only shown for a few seconds, but those few seconds were long enough to cause an uproar the following day, many speculating whether or not this had been a planned attention grabber. Following the incident, MTV and CBS sent out apologies and insists that they had no prior knowledge about the ordeal. But that didn't stop the FCC from fining them thousands of dollars for going against the rules and regulations. MTV CEO Tom Freston tried to do damage control by throwing Janet under the bus, claiming the exposure was a stunt orchestrated by Jackson. However, an MTV rep confirmed that MTV had known about Jackson's plans prior to the performance but added that nudity was not the intended result. Janet would then begin her apology tour and Janet's camp would send out a taped apology. Janet said that the decision to change the performance was made after the final rehearsal and that MTV nor the NFL had anything to do with it. The decision to uh, change the Super Bowl performance was actually made after the final rehearsal. MTV... CBS, the NFL had no knowledge of this. She'd also express how she thought the accident was being used by the media in order to cover up other things such as the possible war with Iraq that ended up coming to fruition. The whole thing went wrong in the end. I am really sorry. She'd apologize time and time again. But that wasn't enough for CBS Chief President Les Moonves, who said that the whole thing caused him extreme embarrassment and told sources that he didn't think Janet at all was remorseful. He banned Jackson and Timberlake from the 2004 Grammys that aired on CBS the following week. Unbeknownst to Janet, Timberlake was allowed to perform after he allegedly gave a tearful apology for the incident. Ooh, shady. Literally, if by any means necessary was a person. Les Moonves ordered Viacom proper Properties, VH1 and MTV, and all Viacom-owned radio stations to stop playing Jackson's songs and music videos, which brought on significant consequences to the sales of her album, The Me to Joe. Janet's apology tour encore ended with an exclusive interview with Oprah back in 2006. It's the best that I do, so I did. Do you think in any way that John do the French, do you think him ripping the whole thing off? Is that what you're no, talking no, about? No, no, no. Um, when 
the idea to change the performance at the last minute, paired with the suggestive lyrics of JT's song convinced folks that this was nothing but a sad attempt at stirring up the pot. So, was it an attempt at controversy? Let's break it down, shall we? Ooh, our writers did their research. Janet's closing outfit change was an Alexander McQueen exclusive, but Janet said she didn't blame the designer for the incident, stating, he wasn't the one that ripped it. In an interview with USA Today's sports Taylor Marcelo Garçon said that Janet had asked him to alter the leather outfit she brought to Houston to wear during the halftime show and that she made him sign a confidentiality agreement beforehand. Okay, Piercer Beria Daly stated that Jackson's stylist at the time, Wayne Scott Lucas, Janet's the bomb, the body's the bomb, I'm lucky enough to have the most amazing thing about Janet walked into the shop and asked for a piercing for Janet. Lucas settled on a sunburst nipple shield. Beria said, at the end of it while we were talking, he was like, okay, watch the halftime show. There's going to be a surprise at the end. I think it's quite interesting that people who are talking about this are all men though. I don't know, what do you think? Beria also claims that Wayne only had bought one piercing. FCC chairman Michael Powell stated, To this day, despite some ambiguity about who knew what, I think we were relatively convinced that somehow those producing the show knew what was going to happen. Their story to this day was that they had absolutely no idea on how the artists just did this up on their own. That's plausible, but didn't seem to us where the evidence pointed. MTV producer Sally Frattini, who also was the first woman to ever produce a Super Bowl halftime, said that the production team first experienced with Justin pulling off Janet's skirt without her being exposed completely. The idea was pitched to Justin, Janet's stylist, or whoever else was in the room. Justin went along with it and the mistake happened. There wasn't supposed to be any reveal. There shouldn't have been an action moment or anything ever ripped off her body. So with all that being said, was Janet Gate actually planned? Well, no one seems to have a definite answer. Janet and Justin continue to claim that the incident was all a crazed accident. What's even crazier is that the NFL would ask Justin Timberlake to headline 2018's halftime show, to which he received insane amounts of backlash and would spark the hashtag Justice for Janet on Twitter. He issued an apology to Janet and ex Britney Spears in an Instagram post earlier this year where he talks about not getting the same amount of backlash due to sexism and him benefiting from white male privilege. In JT's defense, ugh. This wasn't the first time he acknowledged his race and sex being a contributing factor. In an interview with MTV News circa 2006, he acknowledges how sexism plays a part. He goes on to say that people are harsher on quote unquote ethnic people. Uh huh. Okay, look. Oh God. Okay, that was cringe 2006. We'll give him a pass. Barely harsh on ethnic people. Living in an era of new enlightenment, the climate today has become much focused on women's rights and racism. And we don't think Janet would have gotten nearly as much hate if something like this were to happen nowadays. Before Justin's Super Bowl performance, the NFL came out with a statement regarding Janet, stating that she wasn't exactly banned from the show. Well, talk about accountability. If that were the case, then a Janet guest appearance during Timberlake's set probably would have sufficed and really got folks talking. The NFL really missed the mark with that one. All in all, if it were all an accident like both parties claim, then we have to ask, was the backlash justified? Or do you think the media overreacted as per usual? If this were any other pop diva, like let's say Britney Spears, do you think she'd get nearly as much backlash as Miss Janet? Mmm, we know our answer. But we want to hear yours. No shade to Miss Britney though, we love you girl. You deserve your freedom. Let us know your thoughts down below. Hit the notification bell if you want to be down like Brandy and make sure to subscribe to True Celebrity Stories where we talk about your faves business and your faves fave business. We're all here to be nosy, okay? Thanks for watching. See you all in the comment section and stay tuned for the next video.